everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is a project I've been thinking about doing for quite a while and I finally got up the <laughs> nerve to do it, which is turning a regular pair of heels into Victorian button boots, which wasn't as, as hard honestly as I had concerns that it would be. So I think it turned out pretty good. Essentially, this is what the original shoes looked like. Um, I guess this is also sort of a thrift flip type video, but Victorian style. Uh, so yes, I these are used shoes. These are not mine. <clears throat> I wish I could say I got them at a thrift store locally, but trying to source appropriate heels on a local level isn't always going to be the easiest thing to do, but we will talk about what kind of shoe base you need. Let's just quickly show you the comparison. So this is what I started out with. And this is what I ended up with. Which honestly like looks actually even better on my foot to be completely honest, but not bad, right? It's um it's a Victorian button boot. And for way cheaper than buying one, <laughs> which in truth is so hard to even find these for sale. The only company I personally know of that sells them is uh, American Duchess, which theirs do look very lovely. And maybe one day in the far future when I have extra income disposable at my fingertips, I shall buy one. But right now, <laughs> I do not have extra disposable income. So getting a pair of Victorian button boots for under $15 isn't too bad. So let's talk about the shoe core that you're going to need. Like what are we specifically looking for? Now my reference that I was mostly modeling mine off of was this image here, which is a two-toned leather Victorian button boot. Uh, the reason I went with this was be, oh, eyelashes in my eye. <laughs> the reason I went with this one as more of my like definite inspiration was because if in some of the images of it it's like I'm pretty sure it's a black base and then a dark brown boot part so yes it seemed perfect for the fit of the shoe but there are also other ones uh, if you don't want uh, if you don't want like leather on the boot part I found this pair which I really wish I could have made it like this which was actually leather base wool boot and it just looks so nice and mm but maybe that would have been a bit too warm for spring type weather. There are of course so many different variations out there. Um, I know that there's a lot of people that usually wear the black base white, but honestly, like I could not find an extant like example of that. Maybe I was getting confused and there were, they were like real ones, but I, I, all the ones I saw imaged like that were modern. So I don't really know if that was a combo color that Victorians actually wore, but again, these will be your boots and you can do whatever you want and you can do whatever color you combo you want. Also, so just a fun fact, I came across this little like magazine ad for the boots during like the 1880s, 1890s, and um, it shows that they were $2 which of course two dollars nowadays is not the same as it was back then so i did a quick translation so these victorian button boots used to cost about modern money wise about 56 dollars which actually is still amazingly kind of cheap for a quality shoe that nice um at least i was impressed with the price <laughs> all right so without further ado let's go ahead and talk about what kind of shoe core, shoe base you need when you're thrifting around. So I went <clears throat> with this kind of shoe because it has a strap, which means all I have to do is cut off the strap and I've got a really nice shape already. Uh, it'd be nice if you can get one without a strap because then you don't have to cut it and you don't have to worry about what I had to worry about, which was these unsightly areas where I had cut it. <laughs> Uh, but it is a bit hard to find just regular heels that um, aren't like stilettos and stuff. Speaking of heel, let's talk about the heel for the button boot. So, as you can see, I've gone with this sort of 
just it looks really normal and bland but it's actually pretty darn good and very close to what a lot of Victorian button boots had for heels um, because it's got this curved outward part that goes away from your actual heel line to making it nice and smooth and then on the inside it has a slight curve now the actual ones that I saw a lot of on the inside I don't even think you can get heels like this these days they'd actually have what I call like the crescent moon heel because the base had like this huge like crescent cut into it I have never ever seen modern heels that look like that um, of course you could get away with shoes that have the Louis heel uh, which is very common pretty much throughout the 18th and 19th century it was a very popular heel and I even saw some boots that had even more just like a slight chunkier heel so that's nice too. I mean, that one was what what <laughs> that was what was really nice about when I was looking at the real Victorian button boots is that the heels weren't like very much you had to have this kind of heel. There were like three variations of heels you could easily get away with. The two you should not use: do not use stilettos and do not use the chunky monkey heels, as I call them, which is just like the straight, like it's as big as your base. So that's what's great is that you're you do have quite a few heel styles to choose from again the best way to really look at this is just do some research on google images and find like where people have auctioned real life shoes off and yeah so the only other thing is um i wanted to kind of talk about this because i noticed a lot of modern i'm not talking about like american duchess shoes they do pretty good at this but like if you go onto amazon and you look at victorian shoes a lot of modern reimagining of victorian shoes have the really pointy heels and i'm not saying that's not right but for the button boots it's not right <laughs> um i did notice most of them have just this nice rounded heel uh not heel that's your heel this nice rounded toe section so again that makes it a lot easier to source your thrifted shoes um the first place i would suggest is going to your local thrift stores after that if you're like me and you're totally apparently have the same shoe size as every other woman in the world and you cannot find any that are appropriate for your shoe fit <laughs> you may have to go on ebay which is where i got these lovely ladies for 9.99 which isn't bad <laughs> um and yeah uh recommended colors honestly i'd stick with black brown but again this is going to be your shoe and you can do whatever you want especially if it's your first time making it it might be just best to whatever you get your hands on i also recommend having a leather base or faux leather base I actually don't know if this is real I think this is, might be real leather but you never know <laughs> uh, just because literally every Victorian button boot had a leather base so now that we've done talking about the base let's talk about the rest of the supplies that you're going to need so I did not want to spend any extra money on this um, project just because I didn't know if it was going to turn out right or not so I just went through my fabric stash and essentially I found this really nice um, dark brown pleather it's not real <laughs> it's fake um, so I'm using that for my base I have just a regular black cotton lining just so I don't have the ugliness of what the, the way pleather looks on the inside um, the other thing you're going to need is of course buttons of your choosing um, the original buttons I got were actually black and then I'm like no I want to do something extra and I've always loved these gold rose buttons so I went and got them instead and the final part that you thing that you're going to need which I did not know because I thought I believed in my head that I was going to be able to sew this and this together at the base it's way too thick now maybe you have stronger hands than I do but oh, I could just couldn't do it and I realized oh I'm going to need an adhesive to basically attach the top to the base which there's nothing wrong with that apparently that's pretty common if you don't have like a proper shoe machine sewing thing so yes um I used contact cement because that's what I have around the house but I guess a good alternative is something called shoe goo 
shoe goo, shoe glue, shoe goo, I think. So that might actually be better to use than what I use because maybe it's not as horrible. And I think too, you can just use it right away. Like um, with contact cement, you do have to wait for it to essentially dry and get sticky. And like with the inside of the shoe, that was a slight problem because it just kept the fabric absorbed it so much. I'd like kept doing it and reapplying it until it was ready. So it uh, did not work though with shoe goo, so I cannot tell you much about it. But yes, other than that, the only other thing you're going to need is some clean wrap, cellophane, whatever you want to call it, masking tape, and paper. And those are going to be the parts that we make our pattern with. Of course, you're going to need the other essentials such as a sewing machine or needle and thread, uh, scissors, and of course, one's foot. So yeah, I guess let's just jump into this video. I feel like I've been talking your ears off enough. So let's actually show how to do it. How to make this into this, into this. <laughs> first things first, if you're using the strap shoe, you're gonna have to cut your straps. Then you're gonna wear your, put your shoe on and get your cellophane and literally just wrap your foot. For the sake of the video, I am, I took it off my foot after I got a decent wrap. And then the next step is to put masking tape all over it. And then you will draw the lines of where the top of your base of your shoe is. And then basically your center lines and where your button flap needs to go. Next step is fairly straightforward. Just very carefully cut your pattern out and then lie it as flat as you can on some paper, trace around it, and you will have yourself a pattern. Alright everyone, so the first piece that we're going to sew is actually that button flap. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be sewing up this edge here. This out, this curved edge because this is where the buttons are and then I'm going to also sew up the top but we'll leave this open so I can flip it right side out. With the machine, the only thing is I'm taking off my regular foot and I'm going to be putting on my vinyl foot because I just know that uh, since this is fake leather, you know, I, I would, I'd rather be safe than sorry. So yeah, let's go ahead and sew. So I've rotated it so that, you know, the right sides are out. <laughs> I can't get the camera to zoom in. Um, and I'm just gonna basically go along and with the heat of my hands kind of get the creases set right. Uh, once I do that, I will be basting this end closed just to help me in future, so. And this is where this vinyl foot's really gonna come in because I have the vinyl on the outside. Uh, it's still a little hard to start. Sometimes I have to take it in a little bit further and then you can backstitch. Uh, 
Uh, if we wanted to, probably could do a, and maybe I will actually, uh, I think I'm gonna go around the whole edge with a top stitch just to help me keep it from like, see how it's kind of getting this pillowiness to it. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and go around the whole edges, top stitching them just to make it flattened. Okay, so we've gone and done that nice top stitching and now we're gonna actually sew it onto one of the side pieces. But this is important. So looking at all of the extant button boots from the times, the late 1800s and such, most of them button on the outside, which makes sense. You know, you would wanna show that off, which means we're gonna wanna button it, we're gonna wanna sew it to the inside piece first. So. This is our inside piece, and what I mean by inside is this is the piece that's like in the inside of your foot. I don't know how else to really say that. And we're going to sew them like this. You know, match it up with the curve, and then that way this will flip over and go on to the other side of the boot. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and just match up my curve and, yeah, uh, sew it. Okay, so you guys are going to notice I don't have it touching all the way to the top because I will be putting in a lining, which I'm not really sure if I should be doing this first before the lining or after. And of course, I'm not too bothered about the bottom because I made the bottoms to be a bit longer because I want to have some leeway when I'm sewing it to the shoe. So just wanted to explain that to you guys. <laughs> So the reason I did that stitch is, see, now it's going to want to stay open. While if I didn't do that, it was going to want to close all the time. But this should kind of help it actually want to go around in that curve, see? So yeah. So um, I am glad, actually, I didn't put the lining in first. But now I'm going to go find, figure out what I want my lining to be. And I'll be cutting out two, uh, one for each side, so you know. One for the inside piece and one for the outside, which, yes, I know look fairly similar in shape, but I still liked having two separate sections. So, yes, I will go ahead and do that, and um, then I'll show you guys how to attach the lining. Okay, so I know I talked about the lining, but I realized I'm not ready to put the lining in until I attach the pieces at the back, like, you know, the area where the heel will be. And this is important because... That way, because if, I, I mean, you could attach the lining if you wanted to now, but then you'll see, well, like, where you attach it at the back lining, and this way we won't see that. Uh, so, yes. Um, and, yeah, this is where I'm, I'm just trying to kind of, um, also, if you're using pleather, I highly recommend using these grippy clips, not using pens. And what I'm doing is I'm just grippy clipping this where it matches up because I can see that like, because I've cut these longer, I'm like, ooh, some of the other parts don't match as well. Um, <clears throat> so yes, um, but like, see, I've done that and now I can see, oh yes, it does actually match at the back. So that is good. And, you know, this will get, have a bit of give to it, as I said, because we've done, because pleather always has one way that's a bit stretchy, and we've done it to be this way, which will be the way that wraps around our foot. So, I'm going to go ahead and do, sew up this part, the, the heel, basically, the, the, this is the back of your ankle. So, I'm going to sew that up, and then I think we'll actually give, be able to kind of see how it's looking so far on the shoe. So, I'm going to go do that, and then uh, be right back.
kind of tried to pin it along as best I can. And looking around, I can see that it's kind of bubbling a bit. So I might actually take it in in the back here just by a little bit. Um, I mean, it is a little hard to s figure out how much, but I think like honestly, I could probably take an inch in. And this is the best place to take it in at because all this other well it's the only place to take it in at I don't know what I'm saying uh, but this is why I'm doing all of this first before I put the lining in so that I know and and in truth like because this is of pleather if I wanted to I, I could honestly get away without having lining it's just the lining should give me more structure but you can kind of see how it's going to end up looking and uh, so far I like the silhouette like I said, I definitely need to take it in probably by an inch because this does stretch. This pleather I'm using does have stretch to it, so yes. Okay, so I've gotten my lining to match up and what I'm doing is I'm starting over here at that front that has the button flap and we're gonna just sew all the way along the top and along down this curve. Um, and that's pretty much the only sew I'm gonna do to attach the lining. So uh, they're obviously right sides together. Um, so yes, all I've done is I went ahead and then top stitched everywhere that I had just sewn that lining to, so you know, the front and the top. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm just anchoring pivotal spots on the lining at the bottom because now the next step is, and this is probably the harder step because I can't use pins because they might damage everything. So what I'm gonna do, oops, is I'm gonna take the lining at the front and I'm folding it over and I'm going to sew it down all the way that center front, which like I said, is gonna be kind of tedious and not super fun because I really don't wanna risk doing pin. I went ahead and also basted the bottom rough edge there just so I don't have to worry about matching up my lining when I'm with my outside fabric while I'm doing all the jazzy stuff which is attaching it to the actual shoe now and in truth I think that's honestly going to be the hardest part so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna like just clip these for now lined up and off camera I'm just gonna make sure I actually like that lining up on my leg because I've already tested it on my leg and it does fit, which is nice. And it obviously it looks a bit better when it's on a three-dimensional leg. So I just want to make sure I have that lined up. I'll be right back. So I have had an interesting revelation, which I should have known better. And I actually was a bit concerned about this. When I attached my lining, yes, hello, Willow. Willow wants to say hi. Baby, I'm working right now. Yeah. So, what, and I kind of had already worried a bit about this, now it's got willow fur all over it, is it's lost some of its stretch. So, I've had to put it on my foot, my leg, and basically figure out, and I've drawn a line where it will actually get buttons. So, before I attach it to the shoe, I think I'm going to have to take a cat break and give willow some much needed love. So, I'll be right back. Basically what I started with was I started with the back seam lining that up and then I kind of uh, got the front seam which now matches. I don't know why when I tested it the first time it didn't match. Whatever. <laughs> um, and then I kind of, you saw me working around the sides. I wish I could say you don't, can't, you don't have to pin it but you do. And then literally I just very carefully <laughs> tried this on my leg with it with the flap open and this is important because I realized like on this side I didn't have this this flap forward enough so it was getting a weird bump so I just adjusted it tried it on again then I realized I needed more of this um, button lap sewn into the base and now though I've tried it on and I'm liking it I think it's got a good shape for me All right, 
All right, everyone. So I've made sure that I'm, now the inside of your shoe will probably need two coats of the contact cement because it is fabric, but the pleather is pretty good to go with just one. I think it's dry. This has always been my worst part is not knowing when contact cement's dry, but I'm actually gonna start here where my button flap needs to connect since I know the other side has to go underneath it. So wish me luck at getting this connected properly. <laughs> So what I've done is it's really hard, you can't see it on the camera, but I've marked with a pen just a dash where I want each button. And I realized, well, I only have enough for six of these. It would look better with seven. So what I'm gonna do is at the top button, I'm gonna use like some cute little, um, I can't see, like these little Victorian, it won't, it won't capture it, but it's supposed to be like a little Victorian button. It's like that. So a very teeny tiny one of those, oh, and I can't think of the name now. Um, you know, you, they were made of ivory and they were a bust of a woman and I cannot think of the name. But yeah, I have a couple of fun little Victorian style buttons like that. And I'm gonna put those at the top, just kind of for fun. And I didn't wanna go out and buy more buttons. So what I'm gonna do now is um, where I've done and put my slits I'm gonna take you can take I take suggest a seam ripper you might damage something instead of if you go in straight in with scissors but yeah I'm just gonna go ahead and puncture through with my seam ripper just going quite easy then take my little scissors and just cut a nice little slit Okay, I'm back, um, and you, I don't know if you guys can see, but yeah, I finished up this one. Just to save time for this video, I'm actually not gonna <laughs> keep sewing the rest, uh, just cause it's not necessary for this fabric that it like has to be done right away. I will go back and do it when I have some more time, but you know, yeah. So uh, now I'm just sticking my pen literally through the buttonhole and drawing another line. So I know where to sew my buttons. I have my hand on the inside to basically just help me like, press against the fabric so I know I'm not getting it wrong. There's really no magic to this. Um, I'm not the greatest shank button soap, seam, sewer, seam, whatever. <laughs> so yeah, pretty much uh, just go and do all your buttons now and it should be pretty much complete. So I'm gonna cut it and we'll do our final shoe reveal. I'm really happy with the final look of them. I think they turned out pretty darn good. Also, if you use this tutorial to make your own button boots, I would love to see what you do and what you make with them please leave a comment below or uh, tag me on instagram it's the antiquarian clothier as always don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell and hopefully i'll see you guys next time bye bye